Perot said, well, normally I don't have pants and belts. <laughs> but he said, I guess you can. And the dog made a beeline for the basement, went down into the basement, came back up again with, with a police officer, and the officer had something wrapped up in tea towels. And this is the strangest thing I've ever seen in my life. This police officer who was seven feet tall, standing in front of Pearl, who was almost five feet tall, unwrapping the tea towels to reveal a sawn-off shotgun. And then he said to her the funniest thing that anyone has ever said. He said, ma'am, is this yours? <laughs> I guess Gavin asked, right? And I thought Pearl was going to say, no, officer. My sawn-off shotgun has the last supper in Boston stock. <laughs> but she just said, no, sir, it's not. But those are my details. <laughs> I was looking for those. And the officer cracked open the shotgun and dropped two shells out on the back of the Bon Ten Borgen on top of the George Beverly Shade sheet music. And I thought to myself, what an abomination that is. That in a house that is a sanctified and holy place, something like that has to be present. That's Yes, evil. He scooped the shells up in a plastic bag and took the shotgun out, put it into one of the cruisers, and then came back in. And then I was wondering, why are we all still here? Why is this room still packed with old PP officers? And I didn't realize that just before I had arrived there, one of the officers had called somewhere to ask if there was any reason that they needed to have concern about Tracy as well as her boyfriend, and they were waiting for some report to come back. And as we all stood there very awkwardly, Pearl knew the thing to do from years of training in the WA. She said, would anyone like a nice cup of tea? And the commanding officer said, yes, ma'am. We would all like a nice cup of tea. Pearl went into the kitchen and worked away. And just as she was coming back out with the big silver tray with the eight old country roses teacups and the teapot on it, one of the police radios crackled to life and called out Tracy's name and said, prior arrests and outstanding warrants for breaking and entering, aggravated assault, possession and sale of narcotic substances, communicating for the purpose of prostitution. And this poor officer, he knew what was coming as fast as he could. He put his hand up and turned the radio down because he didn't want Pearl to have to hear those words, but he wasn't fast enough. And those words came into Pearl's perfect, holy place like devils rising up out of hell itself, fouling and destroying everything that they touched. And Pearl very quietly and calmly set the tea tray down. And the tears were coming down her face. And she looked over at Tracy sitting at the end of the room and then she looked at the photographs of Tracy on the mantelpiece. The little girl smiling behind the birthday cake. And the little girl laughing in the swimming pool. And the little girl playing the Von Tempton Borgia. And then she looked at me. And she didn't need to say anything. I knew that she was asking me, Mark, when did this happen? And how did it happen? And why did it happen? And I could only look down at the ground because I didn't know the answer. And one of the officers said to Tracy, Will you let me look in your purse? And she just handed the purse over 
like that. I opened it up and dumped out its contents onto the coffee table where the Presbyterian records and the glad tidings magazines were. A few balls of crack cocaine, a plastic bag filled with marijuana, a razor knife, a handful of condoms. He scooped them up as quickly as he could, but not fast enough. Those unholy things had desecrated completely the holiness of that place. And he said to Tracy, get up, and he took out his handcuffs and was about to put them on her, when all of a sudden, from across the other side of the room, Pearl stood up and said, wait a minute. And this was an incredible thing. All those giant police officers filling the room, ready to take Tracy away. But when Pearl stood up and she began to walk towards Tracy, and she said, wait a minute. They parted for her. Like the Red Sea parted for Moses. And she walked across the room towards Tracy. Tracy said, Granny, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I came here. But I promise, Granny, I'll never come back. And what Pearl did next will let you see what it means for the river of life to be with you. In fact, what she did over the next weeks and months will tell you how you should live your life. After they took Tracy away, she was tried and put into prison. Nobody would go Tracy's trial, the whole family had given up on her, but Pearl went. And the family said, Pearl, why are you going to that girl's trial? She has given up on God. And Pearl said, yes, but God hasn't given up on her. And when Tracy went to prison, nobody in the family would go and visit her, and they said to Pearl, why are you? He said, Pearl, you live in the world of the church and the choir and the WMS. That girl lives in the world of crime and sex and the streets and drugs. And Pearl said, I know. 